problem. No problem. I just don't like working at a damn daycare center. Yeah, well, I don't like working at a retirement home, so. Oh, all right. I tell you what, I'm gonna finish my coffee. I'll meet you on the way. Sounds good. 1206. Yeah, that's what. You know that punk's union, right? I heard they just made him a shop steward at UTU. First year? Hell, you know how he got hired. His name's Colson. His two uncles are running things over there at Thornwood, and his brother's a lead welder at Deacon. Whole family's from Stan. Uh, I figures. Here they're shit canning guys every day, but you got the right last name and a rookie's pay grade. You got a job.
Soft Rock Shrimp, is there a problem? No, there's no problem except you got it backwards. Turntable house goes on my end, you're on the ballast. On my end. Other than that, no problem. No problem at all.
story. It's been a long day. How about you? You married? Short story. Once, got two beautiful daughters, though. 18, 19. They're both waitressing, trying to work their way through college. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where at? Hooters. Hooters. No, it's just not right. <laughs> That's right. Hooters. Wipe that grin off your face. I'm a fan. Yeah. You're blushing.
I thought he said it was looking good. That's what he thought. Turns out the judge they assigned was a real hard ass. You gotta be kidding me. Look, the restraining order is being continued for another 30 days. 30 days? What am I supposed to do for 30 days? I'll stay away from my kid. And, and then there's another hearing after that, I guess. What's taking you so long, Will? You can call that lawyer. You can tell him he can stick it up his ass. I gotta Will, go. pick up the radio. Will, pick up the radio. Well trained, but funny. Yeah, this is 
Constructed. Over. What's up? There's an unmanned train out of Fuller on the northbound track. Over. On our track? Acosta? Okay, six, we don't have all the details yet. Just proceed to the next siding. Hold tight. Over. Next siding's not for 10 miles. <laughs>
six sighting. Trover six, you have to get off the main. Over. I understand that, but you got to understand this. So we're not going to fit. Trover six, stand by. That sighting's a good 3,000 feet end to end. Check your timetable. It's going to tell you the sighting's 4,111 feet. But that's signal to signal. In reality, it's more like 2,500 feet. You add those five cars that you picked up. We can fit. No, we won't fit. This message is 1206. Can you tell me where the nearest rip track is? 1206, there's one in 6.2 miles. How fast are you going? 55 mile an hour. 1206, go faster. Over. Why, is that coaster still on the main? 1206, 777 is not a coaster. I repeat, is not a coaster. Over. You're telling me it's under power? Get the goddamn sighting. 1206, stand by. Thousands of gallons of fuel on board, which is highly flammable, but we're still awaiting word on that. 
Dad Stewart. Stewart? You said Stewart. Judd Stewart, an engineer from Brewster. You know? What's your power on the point? 5,000 horses. She's not a hot shot, but she's uh, still got some life left in her.
understand. We're going after your train. 1206, I'm not hearing you. The rear number was left open, so if we can catch up, we can tie it on to our locomotive. Try and slow down 777. Frank, you can't. We already are. Portable derailleur's not going to cut it, Connie. Who said anything about a derailleur? Dispatch. They said that they're evacuating our goal. Two plus two is four. <laughs> He said he's still falling. No, no, no. Tell him I'll call him back. Get me Galvin. Now. Yeah, she got to call Frank, you. that train's carrying 30,000 gallons of toxic chemicals. They had a window before, but that train's going into populated areas. There's no way they derail it now. Are you sure about that? Look, let me make some calls. Make some calls, please.
Bring up beach siding to Arklo. Take a look behind me. You can see emergency evacuation measures are currently in effect right here in the tiny town of Arklo.
Tony Hooper for you. Did I or did I not tell you to get 1206 off the main? I asked them nicely. It's even possible. <laughs> I got it. 
still have a better shot alternating full throttle with dynamic braking. Yeah, but we can't afford to lose counter thrust. Well, what you'll lose in counter thrust, you'll compensate for in tractive force. Are you sure about that? Well, it's more of a hunch based on some quick calculations. It's a hunch. 70 miles an hour and he's giving us a hunch. Okay, thank you. Uh, put Connie back on, please. It's me, Frank. Yeah, Connie. This guy know what he's talking about? Uh, in a perfect world, yes. I'd say yes. In a perfect world, okay. We have more now on that runaway freight train in rural Pennsylvania. They've devised an ambitious plan to bring it to a stop. A single locomotive moves in from behind, catches up, hooks up, and then breaks in an effort to slow it down. Passing mile post 76, Connie, over. You're only a half mile away. Half a mile, out. Frank, run in reverse. How are you going to gauge our gap distance? I can go out there. I can signal you by hand. At 70 mile an hour? I'm asking, would it help? All right. Radio and hand signals will accommodate. Be careful. I will. And oh, and take, take that vest off, too. Why? Just take it off. I don't want to look out this window and see you in that yellow vest. Freak me out.
touch that food. Yeah, just wrap it up with this. Wrap it real tight. All around. You okay? All right, all right. Barnes and Colson have caught up to the runaway train, latching on to the rearmost boxcar, but the train continues to speed in excess of 75 miles an hour, heading to Stanton. <laughs>
Stanton curve, but by no means out of trouble. Triple Seven is gaining speed. It is out of control and has to derail. Frank Barnes and Will Colson will be the victims of the biggest rail disaster in the history of the Northeast. It looks like Frank Barnes is making an all-out effort. This is a remarkable effort now to get to the front of Triple Seven.
successfully making it into the cab, now in control of the 777. Thank you. 